All right, so you need to change your brakes on your Chevy Tahoe or Silverado. Now, first thing you need to do is take off your your hubcap if you have one, or in this case, just the center center cap here. I use the drill to remove these lugs. I've already broke them loose with a cross. You guys can use the wrench that comes with your vehicle if you don't have one but I prefer the cross, it gives me more leverage. Uh, I go ahead and set them back uh, in the cap here. If you guys don't have a cap, that's fine. Just find something to put them in so you don't lose them because lug nuts are not cheap. So once you get that pulled off, go ahead and slide your tire completely out from underneath the vehicle. And what I like to do is I like to throw it down and I like to slide it once I roll it down a little ways underneath the frame of the vehicle I'm working on. It's just an old uh, technique used by a lot of mechanics. In case your jack ever fails or it slips or something terrible happens, you got some kind of protection. Now these are your calipers and you've got two bolts that run through here. You're going to need to take those off, inspect your discs, make sure that they're good. Your rotors need to be smooth, that they're rough or beat up. It's a good time to replace them. I've got a three quarter inch, um, I'm not using metric. I'm using a three quarter inch here just to show you that it fits. So if you're in a pinch, you can do that, but it's better to use the tools you need. Now this one here is on here really tight. This is the first time we've changed the brakes on this vehicle since we purchased it. And uh, it was used when we bought it. So anyway, I went ahead and broke this loose here. And the way I was able to do it was I got this wrench that's an open-ended wrench here, and I slid it over the ratchet and gave me leverage to break it loose. So working in a small space, you can't always use a cheater bar. Went ahead and broke the top one loose, broke the bottom one loose. So here's the bottom here, and then this here is the top. I'm going to go ahead and unthread these, and I toss these in the cap just so I don't lose them. Now this is the caliper. I'm going to go ahead and pull this whole unit off. Now it's going to have a little pressure on it on the back side. Make sure you don't rip that rubber there. Go ahead and wiggle it just a little bit. You know this one. Pull it loose there. And then you're going to expose your brake pads. That right there is the rubber, uh, rubber boot that fills up and actually compresses your brakes and stops your vehicle. Now I don't, I'm not a mechanic and I don't know the technical terms, so... For all the mechanics out there, please feel free to put the names of everything on there. Because to me, when you're prepared or trying to be independent, uh, you need to know how to do these things. And if you can't change your brakes and and it happens to be a terrible situation going on around you and there are no mechanics, you're kind of screwed, right? So it's a good idea to know how to do this. So these brake pads right here, they, won't, they go ahead and just... You just pop them to the side. This one on the back uh, stuck pretty good. So I'm just going to pop it off from the center. It'll usually go flying off. Yeah, that's right. Fuck you, dickhead. All right, so these are the new pads. Okay. And here are the brand new clips or hardware that come with them. I recommend replacing the uh, old clips because they're usually pretty worn and pretty beat up. Uh, it's only a few bucks more. So you go ahead and just pull up in the center and... It has these little uh, little tabs that clamp down on those uh, protrusions there. So you go ahead and pull that off, slap your new ones on, set them in place. So this is the area that I'm talking about here that, that clamps onto it and holds it in place. Here's the other one here up top. And these clips are the same. They are reversible. So don't think one's top and one's bottom. Now, you're going to go ahead and need to take the pressure out of this. And the best way that I found to do that is just to compress these using the old brake pad. 
and use a clamp. But first you need to make sure that your cap to your uh, brake fluid is off. Put your C-clamp on there, make sure it's secure, and then tighten it up. And that will compress that cylinder and it will squeeze the brake fluid out of that cylinder there back up into the uh, reserve or reservoir up top. So once you get it nice and tight, don't really overdo it. You don't want to damage it, but you'll know it when you see it. Go ahead and break it loose. Get your brake pads. Make sure that uh, you have the right one in the right place. You'll see that this one here has a flat lip, and that goes on the back. This one here has a curve to it, and that goes on the front. Let's slap it in place there, Kenny. Assuming it wants to work. There we go. Assuming it wants to go. It's kind of hard doing it one-handed. It's it's way more difficult one-handed, but there's an easy fit. This here is what you see on the back side. See, it's got the flat plate there, and the one on front, it's curved. See, there is a difference. So don't put both of the curved ones, or else you won't have any to put on the other side if you're doing both brakes. So now the calipers, they're depressurized you can go ahead and slip them back on and make sure um, you're gonna have to wiggle it it's easier with two hands of course but uh, it's got a little groove that it sits in down there and then you need to make sure that you do not put pressure on that rubber make sure you push it in there you go and it'll slip right behind it right here so I'm gonna adjust it and then show you how to do it properly so now that it's adjusted just push it in with your finger and then push it push it forward at the same time see it catches it and it slaps right back into place. Go ahead and put your bolts back on, put your tire back on, just do everything in reverse. And then make sure you put your cap, most importantly, put this cap back on tightly because you don't want this thing flopping around or falling off while you're driving down the highway. And you'll see that it's above the fill line. That's because we put pressure on that all the way back up. Make sure that your top of your vehicle is clear of any tools. Go ahead and hold the brakes down pop your e-brake make sure that uh, you undo everything you did press on the brakes a few times make sure that you're putting that pressure back into the cylinder down below okay and then we fumble for my keys I can put it in and turn it on and yes you'll always almost always have your service tire monitor your TPMS because of the fact that uh, those little batteries go out on those things and unless you go and replace all four of them you're not gonna know which one it is and yeah it's a pain in the ass.